Here's another talking book record player to add to my collection. In fact, this is a rather unusual model. This is in a wooden case, just like the tube model I have. You've actually seen it in several videos. But this is actually a solid state unit. And according to date codes that I found on the inside, it's from 1965. And that sort of contradicts the Library of Congress's website on the subject of talking books because they say the first transistorized talking book player was the model AE5 from 1968. It was in a two-tone blue plastic case. Well, this is a model E1 from, like I said, 1965. It's a as far as the case goes, it's a little bit smaller version than the old tube type model that you've seen of mine. Now I don't know what the deal was with this. Perhaps perhaps this was a machine that was made in very limited quantities and it either had problems and it was recalled or either they discovered that the solid state machine cost too much to build at the time so they went back to the tube type model because I know the tube units were in production up until at least 68 when the first solid state machine came along or what they claim was the first solid state machine here's our speed selector 8, neutral, 16, and 33 and on the side we have our knobs for all phone volume and tone as well as a headphone jack and this uses a standard tone arm with a a static PowerPoint cartridge. Now this tone arm has an issue because you can see it's not sitting straight on the uh, turntable platter. And here's the AE5 that they claim was the first transistorized machine. You've actually seen this before but it's in a two-tone plastic case. And this is another one of those deals where the eBay seller that sold it to me charged me thirty dollars to ship this thing from Oregon to Mississippi and didn't use a lick of packing material in the box they used a box not much bigger than the machine and just threw it in the box and shipped it to me now I haven't left feedback yet but I can tell you it's not going to be positive at best it'll be neutral you know when I pay somebody thirty dollars to ship something partial post and all they do is throw it in a box with no kind of effort whatsoever put into the uh, packing of said box, then I don't feel like they deserve a positive feedback. Okay, enough of my ranting about that. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Well, the platter is not rotating. see if the amplifier works. Yeah, the amplifier seems to work. Controls pro probably need to be clean, but I don't think the amp will need much service. Okay, let's get this thing spinning. To be able to read the book you want, when you want it, is not always possible. Okay, the amp works. Let's get this thing to turn without assistance from me. Now I see two problems right off the bat. Number one, the motor mount grommets are rotting, or should I say rotten. This one's completely gone. And someone has stretched the idler tension spring. The spring used to attach here, but someone obviously stretched it over to here. So instead of repairing the problem, they put a band-aid on it by stretching the spring. And since they did that, we may have to replace the spring because because of them stretching the old one out. All right, let's open it up. And here are the two TO3 cased output transistors made by Texas Instruments with a date code of the 47th week of 65 so this machine was probably made either very late 65 or early 66 and I believe these are germanium transistors which is not surprising given the era that this is from and here's the underside of the unit as you can see very well built 
hand wired point to point construction which is very rare for a solid state device I'm sure this machine was more costly to build than the, in the uh, equivalent tube models so that's probably why there's not many of these around and this model also has a cutoff switch to stop the record player when the tone arm reaches the end of the record which is something that that really didn't come out on these type of machines until 1977 with the A77 model machine so yeah this is something that you might say is way before its time we have the idler wheel removed and the next thing we're going to do is put this spring back where it's supposed to be now that looks better and we may or may not have to replace that spring only time will tell and now just like in previous videos I'm going to take this mechanism apart and clean it re-lubricate it this is no different than working on a caliphone or new comb school record player the, the drive mechanism the principle is basically the same even though the speeds are different so I won't bore you with all those details I'll just clean it, re-lubricate it, and then we'll go from there. The only thing I'm going to remind you of is, is use the correct non-vaginal lubrication when working on this stuff. Okay, we have the mechanism all cleaned up, ready to go. All records near a stove, radiator, heating outlet, or plumbing fixture. Do not put any material under the machine, such as magazines, newspapers, etc. Save the shipping carton and inside packing for future use. Headphones may be used, if desired, by plugging them into the headphone jack on the left front corner of the machine. Any standard type headphone will work satisfactorily with this machine. In order to minimize accidental scratching of records by the needle, a different procedure of playing the records is suggested. That is, to start and stop the needle on a stationary record. The next record you play, try the following method. Shift the lever to the proper speed. Turn only the volume control, pointed knob, to the on position and allow the tubes to warm up. Place the record on the stationary turntable. Place the tone arm on the edge of the record. For 12-inch records, you can do this by simply placing the tone arm on the left-hand side of the armrest and permit the arm to slide onto the edge of the record. Now turn the tone control and turntable switch round knob to the on position to rotate the turntable. To remove two. At the beginning of each category of articles or titles, a tone has been recorded. This tone cannot be heard as you play the flexible disc at the normal speed on 8 RPM. However, you can distinguish the tone on the recording if you switch your machine speed to 16 or 33 RPM. To reach the place on the disc in which you are interested, first locate the specific category in the table of contents. Then play the disc at 16 or 33 RPM and count tones until you come to the category you choose to read. Immediately hold the tone arm in place and return your speed selector to 8 RPM. Okay, that was an 8 RPM Content. record, as you might guess. Side one. And there we are with a standard LP. In the next video, we'll address this crooked tone arm as well as do any maintenance on the amplifier. And this thing has the original cartridge in it, which I'm sure the stylus is probably worn by now, so we might want to replace that. But yeah, that pretty much takes care of the mechanical restoration of this unit. Next, we'll take care of the electronic end. Thanks for watching, and more to come.